Hi everybody, I'm Steve, and today I'm introducing you to P5 Play, which is a cool physics engine and game library that works with P5JS. And I'll be coding these two examples from scratch. I recently made this project using P5 Play. For those who follow my channel for generative art, this is not a huge tool in the generative art toolbox, but it's definitely fun to play with. For this video, I'm going to assume you already know the basics of coding using P5.js. The P5 Play website has plenty of great examples of how the various functions work, so definitely check that out. There's no installation required, so you can get started coding right away. Let's get started with our falling blocks example. So if we go to the P5 Play website, we can scroll down to here and you can open processing or P5.js. We'll open P5JS. So if you open this up, it's going to give you an example. And here, click to create a new sprite. And this is the example that starts you off with. But we want to do our own thing. So let's just get rid of all of this. We'll start with our setup function. We'll do a little coding that grabs the canvas size. So min window width, comma, window height and then create canvas, uh, canvas size, comma, canvas size. So that'll create a square canvas. Let's give it a background of uh, 150. And if we just want to put a sprite in the middle of the canvas, we can say sprite equals new sprite. And we'll say, let's just put it at 200, comma, 200. And we'll give it a diameter of 80. And I believe this is going to give me a circle on the screen. Oh yeah, I do need a draw function for this to work. Even if the draw function has nothing in it. There we go. Uh, now if I were to say I want this 80 comma 50, it's going to make a rectangle. But I want this rectangle to fall. So in setup, let's make the world.gravity equal to... Uh, eight i think that's gonna work or maybe it's negative eight let's see oh i have to specify the y coordinate uh, whether the gravity is using the x or the y let's try that there it goes it goes down uh now let's get a background we'll move that into the draw get rid of it here and there we go we got a rectangle falling now let's say we want the rectangle to fall but to stop at the bottom we're going to need to block it from stopping at the bottom so we need another sprite that's going to be in a fixed position let's call it boundary and we'll say boundary equals new sprite that's going to start at zero height because we want it at the bottom and we want it to be the size of the width and it's a rectangle the height of that rectangle let's just make it two and let's see what that looks like if it is showing let's make it height minus 10 or minus 50 just so we can see it there it is okay but i forgot that it automatically makes rectangles uh centered so let's do width divided by two and there we go we've got our boundary but it's falling so we wanted to stop it from falling so to do that we can do boundary dot collider i think this is going to work equals static let me see if that works there we go it stopped very good uh let's move it back to the very bottom we'll take out the 50 there and now it's colliding with the ground but let's say we want to do a whole bunch of sprites so let's do a for loop and we'll say for i or i equals zero i less than let's make a hundred i plus plus and we will do a sprite new sprite uh, take that put it in here and we'll do our new sprite location we'll do random width and let's instead of doing random height let's do a random negative height times 0.5 comma height times 0.5. So that's going to produce the sprites in the middle of the canvas and above the canvas. And we'll make them all 100 by 50. 
this is giving me an error. What am I doing wrong? Oh, uh, this is supposed to be close this parentheses. And let's try that. There we go. Uh, let's make them a bit smaller. And let's put them even higher up. Instead of negative height times 0 0.5, let's do height times 1.5. Cool. Uh, let's uh, narrow the field a little bit. We'll say uh, width times 0 0.4 and width times 0 0.6. There we go. Now, uh, this is falling off the edge of the screen. So let's make another boundary for the sides. Now, one thing we can do if we want a whole bunch of sprites that have the same attributes, such as all of them being static, we can make a group sprite. So let's do uh, walls equals new group and walls dot collider equals static. And now we can get rid of this one. And for boundary, instead of boundary equals new sprite, we're going to do boundary equals new walls dot sprite. And so far, it should operate the same. Let's hit play. There we go, still works. Now let's add our other walls. So I'll just copy this and copy it twice. And the next sprite, uh, let's make it zero uh, because this is gonna be the left side wall. And the, the middle of that height is gonna be height divided by two. Let's make the wall two pixels wide and then the height of the wall is gonna be the height of the canvas. And then the right wall uh, will be the same as this. Actually, let me copy this and paste it on top of this. Uh, so this will be width over here because we're gonna want that on the right side and the rest of it is exactly the same. So let's try that. There we go. Very good. Let's add a static angled platform. So we can just make that another boundary if we want. Boundary equals new wall sprite. And this one though, uh, let's say it's gonna be, I don't know, width times 0 0.67, height divided by two, I think that's okay. Uh, but this thing is gonna be, let's say it's gonna be 200 long and 20, 10 pixels high. See what that does. Okay, but I wanna angle it. So for that, we could do boundary dot rotation. And this should only apply to the most recent item that I'm doing equals, and I believe this uses uh, 360 degrees. So let's say the rotation is 45 and see if that works. Okay, I just misspelled boundary. There we go. Uh, let's do maybe 45 is a little too much and I want it in the opposite direction. So let's do minus uh, 30. There we go, that's more what I wanted. Uh, let's put it a little higher times 0 0.3. Very good. Now you notice it's giving all the sprites different colors. It's just completely random. Let's make all of these sprites, maybe we can make them all one color. So we could say sprite.color equals, uh, I think this will work. Let's just try making them all blue like this. Very good, we got all blue sprites. But let's do something more pretty. I wanna do a monochromatic color scheme. So let's build a new function for that. We'll call it uh, make color. And I can take this out, function make color. And I want to actually in setup, let's change this to color mode, HSB. Let's do 360, 100, 100. And in the end, we're gonna be having our sprite sprite.color equal to something. Let's just put that there, but that's gonna be the end result. So in color mode HSB, we've got a 360 degree color wheel. Uh, let's pick 
from one third of that color wheel, say 120, that's gonna be our range of colors. So let's say range equals 120. And I'm gonna say start color equals random 360. And that is gonna be our hue. And let's pick one of five evenly spaced colors in that 120 range on the color wheel. Let's say hue pick is going to be, it's our start color plus random five, because we're gonna pick from five colors times, uh, actually floor random five, times our range divided by five. So that is gonna grab five evenly spaced colors, except that it's gonna go probably past 360. So we'll say if hue pick greater than 360, then hue pick minus equals 360. So if it goes past 360, it loops back to the beginning. So now we have our hue, but we still need to make that hue into a color. Let's also do a saturation and a brightness, and we'll make that random for the entire project. So let's say the saturation is gonna be a random, uh, let's say between 80 and 100, and then the brightness, we'll say BRT equals random 80 and 100. Now we can say that the sprite color is going to equal color, open parentheses, hue pick, comma, sat, comma, right, BRT. And let me see if that works. Let's do a save on this. Hmm, that doesn't seem to be working. I know what I'm doing wrong, big dummy. I gotta take the start color and put that in setup. Let's try that again. There's our hue, very good. And if we hit this again, we'll get a new color range. Let's also make that platform uh, go with the color palette. We'll do another make color function here, except that this, uh, the walls are different names. So let's do boundary.color. I'll just copy this and we'll say boundary.color. Uh, except that it's, let's see, is this gonna work? I think this will work. No, I got an error. Boundary is not defined. Ah, because I'm doing make color here. Hmm, how are we gonna do this? Oh, I know, we'll uh, just take this part out and we'll put this sprite color in here and then we'll take the boundary color out of here and we'll put that here. And I think that's gonna fix it. Go, there we go. Got it done. Let's try it again. There we go, different color, excellent. So that's it for one example. I wanna do one more example. Let's use this same code, but I'll take this and put it into its own function. Uh, so let's take all of this. We'll cut it from here. Um, I'll make a function, scene one, there we go. This will be the falling blocks. And actually this wall, this last wall that's uh, turned, uh, let's take that and put that in this function as well. And then at this point in setup, we'll just call scene one and this should work the same as it has been, hopefully. There we go, it still works, awesome. So we can save that, uh, and now we're gonna do scene two. We'll just comment out scene one. So we've already got our walls, we've already got our color selection, we've already got draw. So let's make function scene two. So for this one, I also want a for loop. I'm not gonna have any gravity in this one. Uh, so let's grab this for loop and I'll change it. Actually, let's grab all of this stuff, except I'm not gonna use the boundary. So let me copy all this, stick it in here. 
Uh, I don't want 100 this time. Let's just make 20. And for this one, uh, I do want them kind of in the middle. Let's make this also random height times 0 0.4 because I want these items fairly centered and 0 0.6. Well, let's keep them as these rectangles. I think that'll be fine. But for this one, uh, we are going to make them spin. So I think we do that just with sprite.rotate instead of rotation, which is what we had for that static item. I think we just do rotate. And that didn't work. Okay, I was using the wrong one. This is the rotate, and this is rotation speed. I want to use the rotation speed. So that's sprite.rotation speed equals one or two so let's say rotation speed equals uh five i'm not sure let's try that there we go that's what i was looking for uh let's make another wall at the top this one i'm going to want to put in here because for scene one i still want the boundary at the top to be missing so this is going to be similar to this one, which is the bottom wall. I'll copy that, and we'll put that in scene two. And instead of this one being at the height, we're going to make that zero, so that'll be at the top. And try that again. That should work, and there we go. It hits the top. Let's make the rotation speed a little bit more. Let's say 15, triple it. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Let's do the rotation speed, but we're going to vary it. Some of them will spin to the right, some of them will spin to the left. Uh, so we're going to need to multiply this by something. Um, let's do 15 times DR, DIR for direction. And DIR will say if random 2 less than 1, then dir equals 1, else dir equals negative 1. And so it'll either be positive 15 or negative 15. So let's try that. There we go. Now they're going in various directions. And I'm noticing that this is, let me see, I need to uh, pull this down a little bit. I'm noticing you're not seeing what I'm seeing. Let's try that again. There we go, and then it hits the top. Very good. So I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna put a link to this code in the video description, as well as a link to the P5 Play website. There's gonna be a follow-up video to this one. In the next video, we're gonna take the same project and add patterns. We're gonna replace the sprites from P5JS with custom sprites. So you can go check out that video if you're interested. If you've liked this video, please give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. Uh, if you've got any comments, I'd love to read your comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.